This was the first real chance to look at Arne Slot's Liverpool. The game showed us some elements that we can expect to see in the coming season. Although listed on paper as a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, Slot's Liverpool looked a lot more like a 4-4-2, which was even more like a 2-4-4, and we can see this from the average positions in possession. Jones would almost always join Endo in the middle to form a double pivot, and the other midfielder Sabozlai joining the striker, Elliot, further forward. This gave Liverpool a box in the centre, which was a double box if you include the centre-backs. The front two were often slightly deeper than the wingers, who were hugging the touchline giving Liverpool width and depth. This gave opportunity to Zabozlai and Elliot to move between the lines of the Betis midfield and defence. The double pivot was very evident in Liverpool's build-up, with Zabozlai taking up a much more advanced position, usually on the right. It left Jones to partner Endo in the middle in the first half an hour. The positions of the double pivot created these passing angles for the centre-back, with a pass out to the full-back, but with a preferred pass into the central channel. Playing more centrally seemed to be a key feature of this new Liverpool team. There was a reluctance to move the ball out wide in build-up. When an attacker pressed the player with the ball, there was still a pass into a pivot. Betis tried to cover the double pivot, leaving the fullback free, but when the centre back was pressed, one of the pivots could shift across and make a passing angle available. And Liverpool's shape quickly became a 2 4 4, with the fullbacks joining the midfield line. Again, though, this shape was more of a 2 4 2 2, with the front two dropping between the lines and making diagonal passing angles. As a pass into the front leaves a passing angle out to the winger, by playing the ball between the fullback and the centre back to get behind the opposition's defence. Here we can see Liverpool's box in the centre, made up of the centre backs and pivot. Liverpool have a numerical advantage, but it's very tight. An easy pass out to the fullback and then to the winger could see them advance, but this is not taken. Instead, by playing the ball into Endo, who is being pressed they hope to open up spaces in other parts of the pitch. The formation and style of play in build-up has some similarities to the Zerbi's Brighton. Both the fullbacks take up positions in the half spaces during build-up, with one of the opposition's attackers ready to press the fullback when he receives the ball. The pivots take up narrow positions. The position in the half space, instead of being on the touchline, allows two diagonal pass options to be played one to the pivot inside, which again seems to be the preferred option, or the one out to the winger. What Liverpool did as well was by dropping one of the attackers deeper into the half space, it allowed them to keep the winger out wide, keeping the depth and stretching the Betis defence horizontally. So Liverpool's 2-4-2-2 with four lines has the advantage over Betis's 5-3-2 using three lines. Liverpool have created passing triangles for diagonal passes all over the pitch. The two Liverpool pivots remained pretty much in line during the match, but in the instances that one advanced, the position of Liverpool's fullback in the half spaces permitted them to cover the space. And also, as we will see here with Bradley, move into more advanced central positions. So there is some flexibility permitted to the players by slot. As play advances into the Betis half, Liverpool's double pivots move into the final third and played close to the two central attackers. This gave Liverpool numerical advantage over Betis' early 4-1-4-1 defensive shape with a 4 versus 3. Of course, there's always the possibility of a transition, so to help protect against this, the two fullbacks moved more centrally to cover the space in front of the centre-backs. When the ball was rotated, this position also gave them angles to the pivot, attacker and winger. The fullbacks were largely used in deeper roles, either in a back four or midfield four, but there were some triggers for them to get into the final third. When the ball was played out to the winger, this was the trigger to provide support with an underlapping or overlapping run, wherever the space was. This often came about on the right, with the forwards playing between the lines in the midfield. There was opportunity for Salah to step into the Betis back line, taking the attention of two markers, 
and this opened up space for Bradley on the right. The combination of Zabozlai and Salah could potentially be very potent for the Reds down the right. With Zabozlai taking up the position between the lines and pulling a centre-back out of position, he can thread a pass to the overlapping Salah to get in behind. This combination was key to Liverpool's goal with Salah choosing a return pass to Zabozlai. And when Diaz and Gakpo return, I can see this happening on the left too. Teams usually defend in a 4-4-2 or a 5-3-2. Liverpool's was of course a 4-4-2, as this fitted with their natural shape. To Bosley and Elliot cut off passes into Betis's pivot, and occasionally press the centre-back with the ball, although they were happy to sit in more of a mid-block and wait for Betis to hit longer passes out to the flanks. The 4-4-2 block remained in cohesion, moving up and down the pitch in sync. It was a narrow 4-4-2, but when the ball was played out wide, the nearest player pressed and the team shuffled across the pitch to deny space. When the fullbacks pressed the winger, one of the centre-backs moved across to cover the space. 